murder, just as shocking in the 13th century as today. Gerald, beloved merchant and volunteer night watchman for the town of Greymantle, lies cold on the ground, stabbed to death. Down in the slums, at the edge of the stinking sour brook, another man hides behind a stack of barrels, bleeding from his arm. It's well-known troublemaker and town drunk, Robert. His ankle is also twisted from falling, trying to scale the town walls. He's discovered, and he's about to experience 13th century justice. Law enforcement in a medieval town was a tricky business. Life was regulated by a complicated tapestry of overlapping jurisdictions and laws. But there were methods to the madness. Church members were subject to canon law and could only be tried by the church. Market towns often had the right to hold their own court for local, low-level crimes. That's true at Greymantle, where the constable presides over the local court at Town Hall weekly. But murder rose above town law. The killing of Gerald merits a trial at Castle Greymantle. The Castellan, lord of the castle, holds court every couple of months for offenses such as grand theft, counterfeiting, assault, and murder. Robert spends a few weeks in a tiny and filthy cell at the base of one of the castle's towers, awaiting his trial. Greymantle, like most of 13th century Europe, relied on a legal system known as civil law. It was a descendant of ancient Roman law. Civil law gave instructions on how to handle and punish nearly any crime imaginable. There were no juries, and lawyers didn't plead cases. Instead, a judge was given all the facts of a case, and then had the sole power to pronounce guilt or innocence, and prescribe the punishment. Robert stands now in front of the Castellan, Lord of Greymantle. After speaking to witnesses and interrogating Robert, the Castellan has little doubt. He pronounces his verdict, execution, by hanging, the following day, at Terce, which is about 9 a.m. Cheers and jeers greet Robert as he is led away from the Great Hall back to his cell. Had Robert made any important friends in town, he might have had a chance to appeal his death sentence to the crown. But he was unloved, and his victim was well liked. His plea for mercy fell on deaf ears. And from his tiny cell, he can hear the workmen erecting the gallows in the castle yard. Beheading was reserved for the highborn. It was meant to be a noble and quick death, though that depended on the skill and mood of the executioner. Commoners in the 13th century were generally hanged, a slow and agonizing way to go. The hanging of criminals was a public event. Nearly the whole town files into the castle yard. The spectacle is raucous, almost festive. The church bells toll out terse. The cart Robert sits on is pulled away, and Robert is hanged. Because the fall from the cart doesn't break his neck, it takes half an hour for him to strangle to death, all the while being taunted by the crowd. Eventually, he is pronounced dead. Some towns left dead criminals hanging in public view until their bodies decayed completely and the bones fell to the ground. Greymantle doesn't. The Castellan orders that all executed criminals be dumped in the forest far away. The cart takes away the lifeless body crowds disperse, and Robert of Greymantle is soon forgotten.